Hi, I'm Margaret Reed McDonald, and I have stories that are so simple to tell that you can tell them too. And this is one of them. It's from Appalachia, and it's called Jack and the Robbers. Once there was a boy named Jack, and he went out to seek his fortune. He went along, and he went along, and he met a dog. And the dog said, woof, 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 where are you going, Jack? I'm going to seek my fortune. Can I go with you? Certainly, said Jack. Come along. And off they went. Chickity jog, chickity jog, chickity jog, chickity jog, till they met a cat. And the cat said, Meow, meow, meow. Where are you going, Jack? I'm going to seek my fortune. Can I go with you? Certainly, said Jack. Come along. Chickity jog, chickity jog, chickity jog. Jiggity jock, till they met a rooster. And the rooster said, Whoop a doodle doo, whoop a doodle doo, whoop a doodle doo. Where are you going, Jack? I'm going to seek my fortune. Can I go with you? Certainly. Come along. And off they went. Jiggity jock, jiggity jock, jiggity jock, till they met a bull. And the bull said, Bull, bull, bull. Where are you going, Jack? going to seek my fortune. Could I go with you, Jack? Certainly. Come along. And off they went. Chickity jock, chickity jock, chickity jock, chickity jock. Up the hill, down the hill, through the valley. Up the hill, down the hill, through the valley. Up the hill, down the hill, through the valley. Up the hill, down the hill, through the valley. Till it got dark. Where can we sleep, said the animals. Leave that to me, said Jack. Jack saw a house on the hill. He climbed the hill. He looked in the window. There were three robbers in there, counting out their gold. Here's what we'll do, said Jack. He put the bull over the window. He put the dog on the bull's back and the cat on the dog's back and the rooster on the cat's back. He said, when I give this signal, you make your most ferocious noise. Everybody has to make a really ferocious noise at this point in the story. One, two, three. Oh, the robbers had never heard a noise like that before in their lives. They looked inside and they saw an animal that was part dog and part rooster and part cat and part bull and they'd never seen an animal like that before. They threw their money in the air and they ran out the door and down the hill. They never came back. Jack and the animals went inside that house and they counted out the money. And there was a bag of gold for the bull and a bag for the dog and a bag for the cat and a bag for the rooster and a bag for Jack too. Yes. And next morning, back they went the way they had come. Chickity chock, chickity chock, chickity chock, chickity chock. Up the hill and down the hill and through the valley. Up the hill and down the hill and through the valley. Up the hill and down the hill and through the valley. Up the hill and down the hill and through the valley. Chickity chock, chickity chock. Till they came home rich. And that is the story. Now that story is so simple. Did you see it was so simple? Just three parts, jiggity jog going, up the hill, down the hill, got dark, scared them, went back home. You can learn to tell that story so easily. Be sure the kids do all the motions with you, the jiggity jog, jiggity jog, up the hill, down the hill, making all the horrible noises with you. And when you get back, jiggity jog, very quiet, till you get home to calm everybody down. And then once you've told the story to your kids, you know what you should do? Tell it again. And again and again and again, because they love hearing the same story over and over and over, and that's how you get good at telling. And then after you've told it a few times, say, do you want to play the story? Who wants to be Jack? Who wants to be the cat? And you can act it out. You can say all the parts and let them follow along, or they can even say the parts. Have a lot of fun with this story of Jack and the robbers. And it's from a book called 20 Tellable Tales that I wrote. And you can tell the story too. Just get the book from your library if you need to. But if you just listen to me tell it four or five times, you won't even need to get the book. You can just tell the story.
Hi, I'm Margaret Reed McDonald, and I'm going to tell you a story that my grandpa, Parley Garfield Reed, told me. I call it Parley Garfield and the Frogs. Now, my grandpa, Parley Garfield, when he was a young man, he was courting my grandma, Ella. He had to go down across the creek to her farm to see her at night. And in the summertime, that was no problem, because in the summer, down in southern Indiana, where we come from, the creeks run dry. You can walk across on the flat rocks and not even get your feet wet. And in the winter, it was no problem, because down in southern Indiana, where we come from, in the winter, the creeks freeze solid and you can slide across down the ice. But, whoa, in the springtime, when the rains came and the snows melted, that creek that was bone dry in the summer could be rushing full of water over your head and very dangerous, and you couldn't just wade in. But fortunately, my grandpa could talk frog talk. He could, he'd go right down to the edge and he'd say, howdy, visit. He'd call to the little peepers that live right by the edge. Howdy, visit, howdy, visit. How deep is it? And they'd call back and tell him that where they lived, it was ankle deep, ankle deep, ankle deep, ankle deep. Oh, no problem, said Grandpa. I'll take off my shoes and socks. He'd wade in up to his ankles, and he'd stop, and he'd call to the bigger frogs a little deeper. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? And the bigger frogs, they'd call back and they'd tell him where they lived. It was knee deep, knee deep, knee deep, knee deep. Oh, no problem, said Grandpa. He'd roll up his pants legs and wade on in. And then he'd stop and call to the bigger frogs out a little deeper. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? And they'd call back and tell him where they were staying. It was belly deep, belly deep, belly deep, belly deep. <sighs> it's okay, said Grandpa. I want to see her real bad. He'd wade in up to his waist and get all wet. And then before he went all the way out, he'd call to the big old granddaddy bullfrog that lived right in the middle and ask him out if it was there. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? And like as not, that old granddaddy daddy bullfrog would call back and tell him the truth. He'd say, You better go around. You better go around. You better go around. Poor Grandpa. He had to go back, walk a mile down to the covered bridge, cross over, and come back to see Grandma that night. My grandpa told me that story for the truth. I don't doubt it. Do you?